What is going on guys, it's Punching here, and today I'm going to be bringing you guys the much needed and updated 2018 Ultimate FPS Guide for Rust. This video is going to ensure that you're running on the latest and greatest in optimizations for Rust, to ensure that one, your game is stable, two, your game still looks really good, and three, your game performs to the best of its ability, to ensure that you guys have the highest frame rates, the lowest amount of input time, and the least amount of lag possible. Now if you guys have seen my previous FPS Guide, that is now outdated, there's been a lot of different things changed around with the game, especially to do with the game files, and also you cannot use DirectX 9 mode anymore, as that has been removed from the game so if you follow that old fps guide you are going to have problems you are going to have crashes you are going to have issues following that guide so if you guys have been sent over from that guide or if you followed that guide previously or even if you are a new viewer and you've never seen any of my videos before this video is going to be the ultimate one for you so that being said if you guys are happy with the results in this video please make sure that you benchmark or anything beforehand if you guys want to see what your results are as i'd love to know them down in the comment section below after you're done with this and if you are happy with them please do like and share around with any friends or anyone like that please do feel free to comment down below with any feedback or suggest any other games and please do press the like button on this video because it helps me out a ton. Moving on from all of that, what we can do is go straight on ahead and get into the video. Okay, so what you guys need to first off do is go down into the description below as usual and go and find the FPS pack I have provided, download it, and you'll be given a .zip file on your desktop. Now to extract this .zip folder, what you'll need is either 7-zip or WinRAR, so download either of those using Google. Once you've got it, right click and hit extract here. Once you've then extracted the FPS pack to your desktop, you'll be given a folder called Rust 2018 FPS pack. Pangino, simply go inside of there and you're going to find yourself a couple of folders. CCleaner, Game Configs, Unpark CPU, and there's a couple of notepad files inside of here in case anything goes wrong and you need any help. This is updated from my previous video as I've just gone ahead and changed some of these files inside of here, but the Game Config files and some of the files are different, and especially what we're going to be going ahead and doing after this video is going to be different as well. So again, if you've seen my previous FPS guide and this looks familiar, please do follow along with this video. Okay, so starting off, what we're going to be doing is going ahead and we're going to be going into the Game Configs folder. Inside of here, you can either go with the ultra low config or the best config for overall round performance and making sure your game looks good i recommend anyone on higher end systems medium end systems and some low end systems that are relatively new make sure that you go with the best config if you guys want the most fps possible and you do not care about how the game looks and you simply just want the best performance possible then go with the ultra low config so decide which config you're going with go inside of the folder and you'll be met with a client.cfg and you also have a little guide in here to ensure that you guys can go ahead and put your old mouse sensitivity back if you wish to do so but inside of this folder we're interested in going to the client.cfg folder then what we're going to be doing is going down into Steam, going over to Rust inside of Steam, right clicking, going to Properties, going to Local Files found at the top, Browse Local Files, and inside of here we're going to be going into the CFG folder, and then you'll find the Client.CFG inside of here. Right click on it and delete your Client.CFG, move it to the Recycle bin, then simply go into the FPS pack, go into the Game Config, and drag in the new config you wish to install, and it's as simple as that. We can then exit out of those folders, and what we're going to be doing now is going back into Steam, right clicking, going to Rust, Properties, local files, browse local files again. Now inside of here, once we're inside of this folder, we're going to be going over to the rust.exe. We're going to be right clicking, going to properties, go to the compatibility tab. Now inside of here, these options might not be available for you guys. If the options are not here or they're worded differently, follow along if you can. If these options are not here for you guys, it depends on your operating system and your hardware and such. If they're not there, do not worry. Just simply do not follow with this step of the video and just continue on in around about 10 seconds from now. But for you guys that do have the options, simply go down here to where it says override high DPI scaling behavior performed by, highlight that and set it to application and then also enable the disable full screen optimizations by checking the box once they're into a set simply press apply okay and we're also going to be doing that for rustclient.exe right click properties compatibility and we're going to be enabling these two options here apply and okay once you guys are then done inside of there you can simply exit out of your game config as that is completed then moving on from there we're going to be going back into the fps pack going into the launch parameters.txt and inside of here simply copy these three launch parameters from the back to the front ensuring that you have everything copied right click copy go into steam right click on rust properties go to general and set launch options and inside of here simply just copy and paste into there or you can right click and hit paste as well just ensure that it looks like this so it's dash high space dash malloc equals system and dash no log once that's set press ok and then you're pretty much done with doing all of your game config stuff what we can then simply do is exit out of all of those folders and files moving on from there what i recommend you guys go ahead and do is ensure that all the latest windows updates have launched the full creators update for windows 10 has just launched and it can improve your fps on most games by up to 20 percent by simply just applying an update to your operating system so if you haven't updated your windows recently or windows hasn't automatically updated itself or just to check and see that you do have this update installed go to the link in the description below which is something along the lines of windows 10 update follow it download it and then it will 
will simply go ahead and check and it will tell you whether or not your Windows is up to date or if there's an update ready and waiting. And I guarantee you that you'll be seeing an FPS increase on by a little or a lot on nearly every single game you play. It's an absolutely fantastic update and they fixed a lot of issues to do with memory allocation, which can also cause you less crashing inside of games as well. So if you guys haven't done that, make sure you go ahead, go into the description and ensure that that is installed. Then what we're going to be doing is going ahead and disabling our Steam overlay inside of game as this will increase our overall general performance and responsiveness inside of the game and cause a lot less issues. So go into Steam, go to the top left of Steam, go into settings, then inside of here we're going to be going to the in-game tab and we're going to be unchecking all three of the options inside of here. Once all three of them are unchecked, simply just go ahead, press OK and you're done with that step. Next what we're going to be doing is going ahead and clearing all of our Windows temporary files which has just been left there in a dump, taking up excess space on your PC and slowing down your system responsiveness. So to do this, go into the bottom left, type in percent, app data, percent, press enter and go to the app data folder found here at the top, go into local, scroll all the way down to see a folder called temp. Inside of this folder we're going to be highlighting everything inside of here from the top to the bottom, right clicking and pressing delete. Press yes. And then inside of here it's going to tell you that it cannot be completed for all folders and files inside of this operation. Simply press the do this for all current items and hit skip. If it comes up with that again, just simply hit skip. And you'll notice that nearly everything inside of this folder besides a certain few folders and files has been removed, around about 90%. It's always fantastic to know how much you guys have actually gone ahead and removed out of this folder. As I've heard people tell me up to around about 60 gigabytes, some people a couple hundred megabytes, but it's always fantastic to come in and remove stuff from this folder around about once every month. Once you guys have gone ahead and done with that, empty your recycling bin and we're then done clearing our temporary files. Next, what we're going to be going ahead and doing is ensuring that Windows is using all of your resources. To do this, go into the bottom left, type in MS config, press enter, and inside of here, go to the boot tab, select your operating system and your hard drive, go to the advanced options and highlight the number of processes tab found here. Inside of here, we're going to be going down to the largest number possible. This might be anywhere between two, four, eight, 12. You might even have more, but what we're going to do is ensure that we click the highest number possible inside of here as I have 12 logical processes. So I'm going to be highlighting that number and then we're going to be pressing OK, apply and OK. It's going to tell you that it's going to need to restart. We're simply going to be doing an exit without restart as once we've done everything inside of this FPS guide, we're going to be restarting, coming back and then we're going to be booting into the game. So don't do your restart just yet. Next, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be disabling Superfetch. Now to do this, go inside of Windows, go down to the bottom left, type in services, press enter. Then once you've done that, it's going to load up the services windows tab inside of here. Simply scroll down to the S section and you're going to be looking for a service called Superfetch. Simply what we're going to be doing there is we're going to be right clicking, going to properties, pressing stop. And then we're going to be going to startup type, disabled, apply and OK. Now, some people personally do not like this optimization and they have found issues with inside of Windows after doing this. Now, if you guys are having any issues after disabling Superfetch, simply come back onto this video, go back onto it, go to properties, start it back up and set the startup type to automatic, press OK and you can re-enable it. For the majority of you though, you'll find that disabling it will help you out. And once you guys have gone ahead and done that, you can simply exit out of the services tab. Next, what we're going to be going ahead and doing is going into our Windows power delivery options. Now to do this, go into the bottom left and type in power. Now click on any of the icons with the little battery and the cord going around it. So for me, that's edit power plan. Go to the power options found at the top. Go to show additional power plans and look for the high performance power plan. Select that and then go to change plan settings. You can set these two options here to whichever you wish to do so. I'll have them both set to never personally. Go to change advanced power settings. Inside of here, we're going to be going to the hard disk option. Turn off hard disk after and we're going to be setting that to never by going into the setting minutes and setting that to zero. Press apply. Scroll all the way down to see processor power management. Do the same thing. Open that up. And we're going to be going into minimum processor state and maximum processor state. Inside of here, we're going to be ensuring that both of these are set to 100. If they're not, set them both to 100%. And once you're done with that, press apply and OK. You can then hit save changes and exit out of the power options. <clears throat> now we're going to be optimizing Windows itself. Now to do this, go into the bottom left, type this PC, right click on this PC, go to properties. Inside of here, we're going to be going on the left hand side and going under the advanced system settings. Inside of here, we're going to be going to the advanced tab. Under performance, we're going to be going to settings. And we're going to be setting visual effects to custom and we're going to be disabling every single one of the options inside of here just like so by unchecking them besides show thumbnails instead of icons and also smooth edges of screen fonts now i personally do not like smooth edges of screen fonts on it gives me a very minor fps increase and i personally prefer the way it looks without so i personally turn that off but for the majority of you guys you're going to want to keep that on so uncheck it or leave it checked if you wish to do so, hit apply, and then you can simply go to the advanced tab there at the top, make sure your processor scheduling is set to 
adjust best performance for programs, go to data execution prevention and make, and make sure that you turn on DEP for essential Windows programs and services only, which is the option here found at the top. Once you guys have gone ahead and done all of that, make sure you press apply, OK, OK, and you can then simply exit out of there. Now we're going to be unparking our CPU, which means that Windows can access its resources as often and as quickly as possible to ensure that we are getting the best FPS possible whenever it is needed. To do this, go into the FPS pack provided, go into the unpark CPU utility found inside of the folder, and then simply open it up. Hit the check status button. Now after the check status button has been pressed, wait around about one or two minutes and it's going to come back and tell you if your status is parked or unparked. Now mine just before this was parked, if it says parked here, all you simply need to go ahead and do is hit the unpark all option, wait for around about a minute or two. But again, if it says unparked already, I personally would recommend hitting unpark all anyway to ensure that all of your cores on your system are unparked so Windows can access them whenever it is needed. Again, wait around about a minute or so for this to complete. And once it's done with that, it's going to tell you that the status is then set to unparked, or at least it should be. If it's not, press unpark all again, or you can even try running the program as an administrator. But once it says unparked, simply exit out of the program and exit out of the FPS guide. Next, we're going to be going back into the FPS guide and installing a very fantastic utility which I have included, which is called CCleaner. This program basically means it's going to go ahead, declutter your system, remove any excess temporary files, remove any clutter files that don't need to be on your system, and overall improve system responsiveness and performance, and declutter it to ensure that you guys have the best performance possible. Go inside of the CCleaner folder and run the C setup 535, hit the install button, and then simply hit run cleaner. Inside of this utility, it's going to then let you know at the top what your GPU is. Make sure that you take note of that because we're going to be updating our GPU drivers after this step, and it's very important to know which sort of GPU you're running. For my case, I'm running an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 970, so I'm running a GeForce GTX card by NVIDIA. For you, it might be a Radeon card or an AMD Radeon card, so make sure that you take a mental note of that. But inside of here, what we're interested in is going into the cleaning utility found here on the top left and hitting the analyze button. Once you guys have gone ahead and done that, I simply ran C Cleaner earlier on. It's already going to remove 20 megabytes for me. Now, some people inside of here, again, have reported that it can remove up to around about 50 or 60 gigabytes if they have not run this program before. I kid you not, it's absolutely insane what some people come out and tell me. So again, just to get discussion going, please do let me know down in the comments below how many bytes can be removed here. Once the analysis is complete, simply go over to the right hand side and hit the run cleaner option. Press OK. And it might ask you that you need to close the Windows Explorers. That's absolutely fine. So press yes. And then once it's complete, it's going to tell you cleaning complete. It's going to go ahead, show you what it's deleted and how many files have been deleted in the each subsection of the files it's gone ahead and deleted. And what I then like to do to be on the safe side is hit analyze again to ensure that the analysis is complete and there are zero bytes to be removed. If more comes up here, simply hit run cleaner and keep going back and forth until you're given this page. Another fantastic utility inside of here is the registry fixes, which you can do. So I like to go to the registry tool on the left hand side and then hit scan for issues. Again, you guys are more than likely going to have more issues inside of here than I do, as I only did this a couple of days ago. So once it's gone ahead and gone to 100%, hit fix all selected issues. If you wish to back up changes to the registry, you can do that if you want to. I personally don't, so I press no, and then hit fix all selected issues. Issues fixed, and let's just say no issues were found. And using CCleaner is as simple as that. Now, I do recommend either using it on the first or the last day of every month to ensure that you guys have the best performance possible, and you guys can just keep up on top of your PC performance to ensure that you're getting the best performance all the time time and there is no way anything could be bottlenecking you from getting the best FPS possible no matter what game it is that you're playing. So once you guys have gone ahead and you're done with CCleaner make sure that you just close out of that and after that what we're going to be doing is making sure that our GPU drivers are up to date by updating them to the latest versions. Now around about one to two GPU drivers comes out a month and these often do not download automatically so if you guys have not done this you're more than likely going to be running on a very outdated GPU driver and you will definitely see an increase just from doing this part alone and ensuring that you're keeping keeping up to date with your GPU drivers. It's very, very simple and very easy to do. So whether or not you're running an NVIDIA GeForce card or whether you're running an AMD Radeon card, go to the corresponding link in the description below. If you guys are running an NVIDIA GeForce card, you'll be given this website here. Simply go over to the automatic driver updates, hit download there for the GeForce experience, install that and go through everything that it tells you to go ahead and do. It'll do everything for you. It's very, very simple to follow along with. If you guys are running AMD Radeon cards, simply go to the website provided below, scroll down to the automatically detect and install your driver, hit download now. And just like your NVIDIA users, go ahead, follow the program, it'll go ahead and do everything it needs to do for you. You simply just have to install the program and let it do its thing. And I guarantee you guys will see great benefits. Now, moving on to one last step, I'm going to recommend you guys a program called Advanced System.
System Care 10 free. Now, if you guys followed my last FPS guide, I used to recommend Razer Cortex. Now, this program here provides a much better game booster than Razer Cortex, and it also helps your overall PC performance by going ahead and fixing any issues you might be having and going ahead and sorting out your registry files for you and everything like that. It's very, very simple to do. It's completely automated. And I recommend every single person I talk to to download and install this program as it will help any PC issues you might be having, any misconfigured files inside of your PC, and it will just go ahead and overall speed up everything to do with your PC for you to ensure that you're having the best performance possible. Use the link in the description below to get to Advanced System Care 10 free, or you can just simply Google it. Go ahead, hit the free download, and install it to your PCs. Once you guys have done that, go to your desktop and simply boot into the program. Go to the Clean and Optimize tab found here at the top. Now, what I like to do is make sure that you hit Select All to make sure everything inside of here is selected. And then what I like to go ahead and do is hit that big button there, which says Scan. It's going to go ahead and scan through your startup items, your registry entries, system optimizations that it can do for you, any disk errors, any hard drive issues, security vulnerabilities. It's going to go ahead and show you guys how many things it can fix for you, find any vulnerabilities and how many repairs it can make. It's going to go ahead and give you a list on the left-hand side there of what it can fix and how much of an improvement you can get from that. Then once the scan is complete it's going to go ahead and tell you how many items it's found that it can go ahead and fix or optimize for you it's going to give you an overall rating of what your system security is like your system performance and also your system stability once you guys have gone ahead and read this summary you can simply just go ahead and press the fix button which is going to go ahead and apply all of those fixes for you in which it has listed out again this can take around about a minute or two so make sure that you do leave it to run its course and fix everything it needs to go ahead and do the once advanced system care is done it's going to let you know that the fix is completed it's going to go ahead and give you a summary of everything it's gone ahead and fixed for you and the size of the files it's fixed for you and what you can simply go ahead and then do is hit the finish button there i do recommend using this program around about once or twice every month i personally like to do it on the first or the last day of every month to ensure that i have the best performance possible going into the month ahead to ensure that i'm not going to be running into any issues to do with my operating system and any issues that do come up that i know they are definitely not down to this another thing i like to go ahead and do is go to the speed up tab found here in the top left i like to go to the deep optimization tool found inside of here now you guys are are more than likely going to see optimizations available. What I then recommend you guys go ahead and do is hit the optimize button there. And once you guys have gone ahead and done that, it's going to go ahead and apply those fixes for you. And like I mentioned earlier on, you also know the turbo boost feature is inside of the speed up tab here, which is what we're going to be coming back to once we restart our PCs. Just before we boot our game, we're going to be enabling this turbo boost mode. But what you can do for now is you can simply exit out of advanced system care. Now, moving on from that, there is only one last step left, and that is to make sure that you go into the FPS pack provided. Go ahead, get the timeresolution.exe, go ahead and throw that into your desktop. What this is going to do is lower the latency and ensure that Windows can access your resources as fast as possible. So the game, the operating system, and your hardware can talk to each other at the fastest rate possible to ensure that you guys don't have any stuttering, any hitching, and you get the best FPS possible with the lowest amount of latency. So simply what you need to do then is just hit the maximum button, minimize the program whilst you're playing. Once you're done playing, open the program back up, hit default, and then close out of the program. But for now, what we're gonna be doing, seeming that we've applied all of our fixes and gone ahead and done everything inside of this guy, we're going to be going ahead, going into the bottom left, pressing the power button by right-clicking and hitting restart on our systems. Now, once you guys are back inside of Windows after restarting your PCs, again, what we're gonna be doing now is preparing to boot our game. Now, every time we boot Rust, what we're simply gonna be doing is going into our timeresolution.exe, opening that, setting that to maximum, we're then going to be going into advanced system care, going to the speed up tab and hitting turn on for the turbo boost mode. It's then going to go ahead and tell you how much RAM was released and how many services and apps have been stopped to ensure that you guys are getting the best resources possible with inside of Rust. For me, it's going ahead and freed up over half a gigabyte of RAM, which is crazy, assuming I have 16 gig of RAM and more than half of a gigabyte has just been given back to me to allow me some overhead for whilst I'm playing. So once that's enabled as well, what we can simply then go ahead and do is go into Steam, go onto Rust and simply just hit play. And then once the game is booted, you can simply just go ahead join any of the servers you were playing in before enjoy a much better experience with less lag lower latency and a higher frame rate please do let me know about your overall general results in the comment section below as it is always fantastic to get a discussion going on because i love to know what your guys results are and if you are pleased with the results please do hit that like button on this video as it does help me out a ton also share it around with any clan members or any friends that you do play rust with or anyone in general that might that might benefit from a guide like this to ensure that they have the best fps possible whether they are running on a high end low end or medium end system it doesn't matter we all want the best frame rates possible with keeping our game also looking really really good so thank you very much for watching this video guys again please do share around please do feel free to leave any suggestions in the comments below any feel free to let me know about any games you wish to see me do an ultimate fps guide on and please do subscribe and have a look around the channel for any content you might be interested in as there might be some stuff in there that also piques your interest thank you very much for watching this video guys i have been panjano
and I'm out.